Did you know that the average American citizen knows one male currently serving time in prison? As harsher laws and increased sentences are being passed, more and more people are being incarcerated in this country. To combat the overcrowding currently going on in public prisons, more and more states are looking to private prisons as a solution. Advocates of private prisons say that these prisons save the taxpayer money because they are more efficiently run than the government. Sadly, this is not always true. These private prisons do not perform the three main functions that a prison should. And I'll also show you that their cost-cutting measures are often not beneficial to the community or to the prisoners they house. Doing this, we will see and we will understand Kevin Pranis' quote when he says that as far as private prisons are concerned, when it comes to the free market, it's better served when people aren't free. Now, what are, the, what are the three roles of a private prison? There's no legislative definition of what a prison should entail. But society has come to the understanding that they serve three core functions. The first is to protect the public. The third is to rehabilitate prisoners that are capable of being rehabilitated. And the, the third is punishing criminals who commit crimes. Now, how do they do this? The first one's simple enough. They protect the public by incarcerating criminals and keeping them from escaping. The second function is not so easy, but it is just as important. Rehabilitating prisoners gets the prisoner out of our jail system and turns them into a law-abiding and taxpaying member of society, thus unburdening our tax dollars in two ways. <coughs> the third function is to punish criminals. While that sounds easy enough, these private prisons do not always do so humanely. So we have to ask ourselves, do these private prisons perform these functions adequately? First, we're going to look at protecting the public. <coughs> right here in Arizona in 2010, in August, outside of Kingman, three prisoners escaped from their medium security prison. This happened due to a lack of well-trained personnel and faulty devices on the, <laughs> well, sorry, faulty devices on the perimeter of the jail. Two of those prisoners were quickly caught, but the third was not apprehended until after he and another accomplice had murdered an elderly couple. These prisons cut costs by, like, as I said, hiring fewer and fewer employees. Research in 2000 showed that these employees make 59% of their, their counterparts in public prisons. That same study shows that these five private prisons have a 52% turnover rate compared to 60% in the public sector. Because of this turnover rate, these prisons are having to train more and more people, so their saving in wages, the advantage quickly evaporates. Along with these untrained employees and less amount of employees, it's okay. They are unable to keep the public as safe as they should. So it's easy to see that these private prisons do not adequately serve the function of protecting the public. Secondly, we need to ask ourselves, do these prisons rehabilitate their prisoners? Uh, Research done by the Public Policy, Reason Public Policy Institute found that private prisons have a much higher rate of use of drugs because they don't have the measures that public prisons do when it comes to rehabilitative measures. Along with this, their recidivism rate is much higher, which is to say that when a prisoner is paroled from a private prison, they have a much higher likelihood to go back. Now, we have to ask ourselves, why would a private prison want to rehabilitate, rehabilitate their prisoners? If they do so, they lose their customers, thus their profit. In her article, Prisons for Profit, Rachel Antonuccio says, these prisons do not have any desire whatsoever to rehabilitate their prisoners. They actually can't make money in a society without crime. So how, we have to ask ourselves, do these prisons, prisons ensure that they have customers and prisoners to fill their beds? Well, that's simple. They donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to political campaigns supporting candidates that support harsher laws that will put more and more people in jail. Since 2000, since 2000 the top three private prison companies have donated over $800,000 to senators and people running for the House of Representatives. CCA alone, the Corrections Corporation of America, has donated over $900,000 since 2003 to lobby the federal government. When they lobby, they're looking to pass laws that put more and more people in their jail cells. Right here in Arizona, 
the, the American Civil Liberties Union report, Banking on Bondage, found that Governor Jan Brewer's key staff members, including her campaign manager and her chief of staff, were closely tied to lobbyists for public prisons, private prisons, I'm sorry. Brewer herself received nearly $60,000 in campaign contributions from people tied to the private prison industry. So we can see that these prisons don't, do not want <laughs> okay. okay. These prisons do not have a desire to have prison reform. Now, lastly, we have to ask ourselves, do these prisons serve the third function, which is to punish criminals? And while it's clear anyone knows that someone spending time in a prison, whether private, public or private, is being punished, but do private prisons do so humanely? In research, we've seen that for every fewer employee in a private prison compared to a public prison, violence goes up. In the last three years alone, in Arizona, there have been over 28 riots and 200 other disturbances, which have included at least 50 prisoners. So while we can see that these prisoners are being punished, we have to ask ourselves, is this the kind of punishment that even a criminal deserves? These companies are profiting on people committing crimes. I was always told that the only people that committed crimes or profited off crimes were the criminals. It's frightening to know that this is such a lucrative business. On top of this, the savings that they're supposedly saving are not always adequately true. We find that many of these prisons do not take sick inmates. So, when you add up all the costs of sick inmates, it's easy to see why their dollar per prisoner per day is that much lower of public prison. It's easy to blur the numbers to make a statement. So we have to ask ourselves, is it really worth it? When an elderly couple is being killed, are the savings really worth it or are they savings at all? Once again, I refer you to Kevin Prentice's quote, that when it comes to private prisons, the free market is best served when people aren't free. Thank you.